Hello, welcome to Skull RPG Podcast. My name is Dwight Skull. My name is Jacob Skull. And today we're going to teach you how to tell, tell your, your story. story. So Dwight, to switch gears a little bit from our previous episodes, let's get into a little bit of world building to help out. Yeah. So one of the things that we need to start, we need to talk about to begin with is how would you take pre-made stories, so like your Star Wars, your Harry Potter, and take those concepts and put them into an, into your RPG? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a good skill. Um, first of all, what nice, what's nice about doing that is um, if all of your players are familiar with a world, let's say all your fran- all your all your people have all read the Cimmerillion from Lord of the Rings, and they're like, "We want to play in the Second Age of 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 Middle Earth." Cool. All right. First rule I would say is none of you can be any character named in the work we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Then I would work at maybe having them, um, we, would, we would do a lexicon. Again, if you haven't heard lexicon, I'm going to keep bringing this up, lexicon thing up. So if you haven't heard a lexicon episode, go find it. It's like way at the beginning. Or go to skullrpg.com slash resources. Click on lexicon and read up on it. But basically I would do a lexicon game where we figure out what part of Middle Earth we want to be in. Or what part of Star Wars do we want to be in? Or what part of Star Trek do we want to be in? Or what part of, you know, I don't know, the Karate Kid? That would be a weird one. But whatever. <laughs> Some weird thing. What part of Back to the Future do you want to be in? You know, I mean, whatever it is. Because um, it doesn't matter what it is. Mm-hmm. As long as your players or enough of your players are familiar with it, then you could have a good time with it. Um, the nice thing is since you're not using any, quote-unquote, no one can be a named character then what's really nice about it is any named character that shows up, uh, as long as you do it kind of what TV does. So actually, The Mandalorian is a great example of this, okay? So in the newest episode of The Mandalorian, it's really not a total spoiler, so I'm not going to name the names. But in the newest episode of The Mandalorian, if you watch The Clone Wars, he runs into somebody who is very prominent in more than a handful, but not a ton, of The Clone War episodes. So those that have watched The Clone Wars are like, oh, I know who that is. I know what's happening. Those that haven't watched The Clone Wars, that only watched the movies or are only watching The Mandalorian, are like, oh, cool, I just got introduced to this person and now I kind of know a little bit about them. But the person that knows all the backstory knows all the backstory. So why I bring that up is because if they're meeting somebody like an Elrond and they're not familiar with anything, they're meeting Elrond introduce Elrond as if they don't know who Elrond is. But people that know who Elrond is, specifically in the second age of elves, would understand a lot more about what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. The danger of that is if you're going to play in those kind of worlds, you need to be at least the second most knowledgeable person at the table. You don't have to be the first most knowledgeable, but at least the second. If you're the fourth most knowledgeable person on the table, you should not be running this game. Um, so you're going to play in Harry Potter and you'd like, I've read Harry Potter maybe once. And then you're playing with a person who, when you do Harry Potter trivia, they're kicking everybody's butts at it. That's the person that should be GM in Harry Potter, not you. Yep. So if you're going to take an unknown story, make sure that again, you're the second or the first most knowledgeable person on it. And then the nice thing is you can bring in these cool little like, um, Easter egg moments where they meet somebody. And it may not mean anything for those that are the fourth most knowledgeable, but the people that are like first or second are like, this is why we wanted to play the game. We wanted to meet Harry as an or in his adult years. This is awesome. Like, you know, and or you bring up really weird, you know, like, hey, let's talk about the effects on on Hogwarts 20 years after the last battle there. And how does that all play out? What does that look like? And and then they finally find the room of requirement, and the people that are diehard fans are like screaming on the inside, like little fangirls. And the guy or gal who's like, ah, "I've seen the movies once, yeah." Doesn't this room let you like get whatever you want? And the other are like, "No, no, no! It's so much cooler than that." Um, it's kind of that allows you to do that. So how do you adapt it though? Again, take the world concept for that time period, whatever it is. I would like to divorce the time period from a time period that has a lot of media around it. So, and you even heard me just talk about this. 20 years in the future from Harry Potter. What does Hogwarts look like 20 years in the future? Or kind of what Fantastic Beasts is doing, right? Where it's like, yeah, we're going back 100 Mm years-ish. 
you know, uh, to an area where you're not as well familiar. So do the same thing they're doing. Go to a time period that no one's familiar with. In Star Wars, you have like, I don't know, 80, 100,000 years of history. I mean, I, it's, it's huge. Before and after any movie, pick a movie. It's, it's <laughs> Yeah, there's so much time period. So you just like, oh, we're going to do Old Republic. Oh, when? Like the game Knights of the Old Republic? No, we're going to go back a little bit before then. Or, you know, we're going to go back before Revan or whatever you want to do. The point is you want to have your people familiar with enough with the time period, but you want to shift it just so that you can actually create a world of your own based on the world that's there. This also allows you not to have to deal with the psycho crazy players who are absolutely fixated and somehow want to play Lord of the Rings, the book, exactly as it was written and yet somehow are rolling dice, right? Well, it's like, oh, we were on Weathertop and Frodo didn't get stabbed by the Nazgul. That's a huge mistake. Well, yeah, because you're playing Frodo and the Nazgul, and you're playing randomized yeah, well, roles. Well, well, you critically succeeded on your uh, hide checks, so they're not there. The Nazgul didn't find you. Good job, Frodo, for <laughs> being able to hide well in that one time where you're supposed to feel your roll on your hide. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but he's supposed to have the wound, and he's supposed to feel the wound, and all the stuff from the wound. And you're like... Well, yeah, but you rolled so well that you didn't get the wound. Like, again, anytime you're playing anything that exact, there's always a chance that your your character who's supposed to fail succeeds and who's supposed to succeed fails. Mm-hmm. So, okay, better question. Frodo critically fails his dodge roll against the Nazgul and doesn't take the sword to the to the shoulder. He takes it to the heart. Now what? Well, the ring bearer's dead. Well, crap. There goes the entire point of the story. What are we doing? Hence why you never set the game in the story that you're like you're wanting to... Well, I'm going to say the story you want to tell. You want to tell a story in the world, but not the story that J.R.R. Tolkien or J.K. Rowling or George R.R. R. Martin or anybody George else that Lucas has... George already did. Oh, see, I was going to keep with the... Everybody has the initials, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, or George Lucas, you know... I wish I knew his middle initials just so I could throw it in here right now. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, but the point is, you know, you, you want to then take it, right? You want to do Game of Thrones. Perfect. Do Game of Thrones 100 years before the events of the books. Do, mm-hmm. do it 20 years before the events of the books. Um, play out the war that they hint at. You know, even then I'd be worried about that. I would play out the war before the war that they hinted at. Because I don't want to... I wouldn't want to have something where it's like, oh, my God, you know, we were playing the characters and then this war went a different direction. That changes the entire outcome of everything. Yeah, that's problematic. You need to not do that. So make sure if you're going to play in something that familiar, you put it in a setting where whatever could have happened with these players, whatever they did, it's already kind of folded into the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, if you look at it, the video games specifically, like um, all the video games that they come out with that are playing, um, Lord of the Rings does a good job of this, right? Like the War of the North or these other things. No matter what the outcome is of the War of the North, it's already taken into account by the time the books come along, yeah. right? Like whatever you've done, good, bad, ill, otherwise, it's already played itself out. And whatever that is, is included, even though... Tolkien arguably had no idea what you were talking about because it's, you know, 100 years. What are you talking about video games for? But the thing is, anything you could have done, it's already wrapped into the world, right? So you're not affecting anything. So this is why your the, your named characters can't show up for major battles. They can't be killed. They can't, you know, they got to show up in terms of, like, they gave advice. You know, maybe you run into Galadriel and you, and you talk to her and she gives you something really cool and then you go on your way. Well, you're never going to be in a war with Galadriel. You're never going to fight Galadriel. Because what if you killed Galadriel? So then, okay, you killed Galadriel. So then where did the Hobbit and where did they all go to get respite after the Mines of Moria? You killed the queen. Mm-hmm. you got to make sure that the named people you're dealing with are just periphery characters. And anybody that lives and dies in your world are not named characters. You know, now if you know that there's going to be a named character that dies in your world because you know it so well, sure, they could show up for that death, but they're in no position to stop it, right? So, um, 
you know, it, one of the alpha lords of Lord of the Rings has to die in the second second battle, like second age battle. Your characters are fighting in the second age battle. Yep, absolutely. They're on the other end of the battlefield. There's nothing they can do to prevent it. And they see it happen, and maybe they go on to win that war or fight that battle or whatever it looks like. But the point is, the guy who was supposed to get captured or killed got captured or killed. And your characters have no ability to stop it. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with this. But again, just make sure, and this is the yep. real cardinal rule, you're not playing Harry Potter. You're not playing Ron yep. Weasley. You're not playing Frodo Baggins. You're not playing yep. Jon Snow. Yep. <laughs> Luke the Skywalker. Only, the only exception to this would be, and you would have to lexicon this regardless, is if you're creating kind of like an alternative history sure. of that, but your players would have to know that they're getting into that, so they're going to have to throw everything that they know out almost at any way to begin with. It's a really good point. You would do this with a modern game, let's say, or if you're going to play like a modern... You're going to play like a... We're going to do Jack the Ripper, which is what we've done like three or four times. Jack the Ripper now is a psionic mutant. Jack the Ripper mm -hmm. now is a magic user. Jack the Ripper is now or, uh, whatever. Or in yeah. this one, Boromir doesn't die, and then what's the ramifications of the Fellowship yeah. having that? Because you guys say yeah. Boromir. You guys, yeah. you can have different changes with that, as long as you're playing it with alternative history of, yes. we're going to be changing the events of this, and that's part of the thing. And honestly, I'll be, I'll be really frank, that is how you could get away with one of these, if you're like the third or fourth most knowledgeable player, but even then it's not going to be as fun. I mean, yeah. if you for being the most knowledgeable player, you really yeah. need to have a good background handle on this. But this is where all of the "what if Nazis won World War II? What if dinosaurs are still around?" or right. things like that. Yeah, it's the Watcher series in Marvel. I mean, you could totally do that. It's totally fine. But it's just something to keep in mind that if you're going to do that, you need to straight up announce it beforehand, because the real problem with playing known events. Is what if the critic? What if you critically succeed when you should have critically failed, or vice versa? And you know, oh look, Washington lost the battle. You know, he lost some of the key battles in the revolution. Oh wait, we're still speaking British now or, in 2020. Good job, your characters uh, critically failed on a handful of information on D-Day, and D-Day was a complete failure and a disaster. Right. So Germany now, won because of that. Good job. And you weren't playing alternative history. Oh, crap. Well, what happened now, right? So anyway, yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, call it out. If you're going to do something that close, alternative history is the only way to go. If you're not going to do something like that, which is uh, my suggestion, because alternative history has problems. It does. I would just do something in a history that hasn't been fully explored yet, and you're fully exploring it, and doesn't mean... That it can't happen at the same time, right? You could do, you could do a hey. There's the war in the north happening at the exact same time. Frodo's taking the ring to the south, and your whole goal is to keep the eyes of you know Sauron northward, as opposed to south where the ring is heading. Mm -hmm. And whatever you did worked, yay! Congrats. Um, and it doesn't matter if you lost or won or failed a battle that no one ever heard of, because you kept Sauron looking and paying close attention to you to yep. win that battle. And your characters are the unsung heroes of history. Exactly. Which is exactly where you want them. Hey, thanks for listening. And for more resources, please go to SkullRPG.com.